All praises to the Lord. So tonight's topic is called Enemy of the State. Enemy of the State. CSC Machinin. CSC McDonald's Machinin. Enemy of the State. Okay, we're going to be going over the history of our brother, CSC Machinin. Okay, let's open up with the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 19. Let's start there. Okay, you know what? Give me Romans 15, verse 4. Let's open up with that. Romans 15, verse 4. Read that. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written of all time, were written for our learning. Great. He, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Read that again. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written of all time, were written for our learning. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So the most that God is letting us know here through the Apostle Paul that the things that were written are time, meaning in the past, were written for us to learn. This to going into history. The Lord is teaching us that we must be in tune with our history. When you read the history of our forefathers, they were always in tune with their history, unlike today. So we must understand. We must know our history so that because history is bound to repeat itself. Our enemies know our enemies because they study us. They study our history. They know the history of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, which today are called Bantus, Negroes, Songas, Peris, whatever they call us. You understand? Read that again, verse 4. Okay, come on. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Read. For whatsoever things were written of for time were written mm -hmm. for our learning. Read. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So we're only gonna we're only gonna find comfort in the scriptures. The things that are written, the Lord will give us comfort this day. Now watch this. I'm going to take you back in the past. Give me Exodus 33 verse 19. Exodus 33 verse 19. Because our forefathers in the past, those that came in and left, they left a mark on this planet Earth. They left a mark for us to learn from that we may be able to do what? We may be inspired by their works. TSC Machinini is one of our forefathers that we must remember that blood. We must remember that great forefather that came in our time. We what you got, Exodus 33, verse 19. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 19. Come on. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. Read. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. Mm -hmm. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will be what? And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. So the Lord says they will make his goodness pass before thee and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. The Lord is telling Moses, say, listen, I'm going to be gracious to whom I will be gracious to. Go ahead. And will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. He says, and I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. CSC Machining is one of those brothers. Don't get it twisted. They did not, they did not have the laws of God with them. But they had the spirit of the Lord on them. I'm going to show you that thing. Give me Job 32 verse 7. The Lord says he will be gracious to whom he will be gracious. He will show mercy to whom he will show mercy upon. Read that. Job 32 verse 7. He's only making reference to the 12 tribes of Israel. And TNC Machinini was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Read what you got. Job 32 verse 7. Come on. The book of Job chapter 32 verse 7. Read. I said, they should speak. Mm -hmm. And months of years should teach wisdom. You see, the days should speak. So the days upon this earth, they should speak. And the multitude of our years upon this earth, they should teach us wisdom. Okay, come on. But there is a spirit in man. There's a what? But there is a spirit in man. But there's a spirit in man. There's a spirit in man. Come on. And the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. You see that thing? And the inspiration of the Almighty gives the man that the Lord inspires understanding, to understand the, the condition of his people. Because our forefather, T.S.T. Machinani, he understood the condition of his people at 19 years old. He could already see the injustices that were going on around him. Understand that? The spirit of the Lord was upon this brother. Read again. Okay? Verse 8. Come on. The book of Job, chapter 32, verse 8. Read. But there is a spirit in man, mm -hmm. and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. The inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. The Most High God is the one that inspires, 
that brother of ours. See, see my name. The Lord inspired him. Okay, watch this. Give me Job 33, verse 16. Okay, Job 33, verse 16. Read that. The book of Job, chapter 33, verse 16. Read. Then he opened the ears of men and sealed, mm -hmm. the, sealed their instruction. You see what the Lord does? He opens the ears of men. He opens their spiritual ears to see, to hear the things that the people are complaining about. To hear the, to hear the ills and the cry of the people. Read again, verse 16. Come on. The book of Job, chapter 33, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Then he opened the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. And sealeth their instruction. And sealeth their instruction. Read again. The book of Job, chapter 33, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Then he opened the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. The Lord will open the ears of men to seal his instruction in those men. You understand? For, for them to do the will of the Father. Read on, verse 17. Come on, watch this. That he may withdraw man from his purpose. That he may do what? That he may withdraw man from that his purpose. May, that he may withdraw man from his purpose. You understand? That man must not do what he wants, but man will do what the Lord wants. Go ahead. And, he, and hide pride from men. And hide pride from men. Give me that in Proverbs 20, verse 24. Proverbs 20, verse 24. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Come on. Man's goings are of the Lord. Mm -hmm. How can a man then understand his own way? You see that? Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his way? Listen, everything that we do upon this earth, the most that God has a say so. You understand? Whatever it is that our forefathers here to machine in the did, the Lord had a say so. He inspired that young man to do what? To wake up the 12 tribes of his heart because he saw the injustices of his people. He said, hell no. We need to fight. We need to defend our nation. We need to fight for our freedom. That's what he did. The Lord inspired him. Read it again. Verse 24. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 24. Come on. Man's goings are of the Lord. Mm -hmm. How can a man then understand his own way? How can a man then understand his own way? Give me Proverbs 21, verse 1. Proverbs 21, verse 1. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 1. Come on. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Mm -hmm. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. You see that thing? The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Guess what? We are kings upon this earth. You understand? We are kings on this earth. The Lord is the one that directed our mind. He's the one that ever said so. Read. Every way of man is right in his own eyes. Mm -hmm. But the Lord pondereth the hearts. You see that every way of man is right in his own eyes. But the most like God, he's the one that ponders the heart. Next verse. Come on. To do justice and judgment is more what? acceptable. Hold on. You see what? You see what the Lord put upon our forefathers? See, see machine in it. To do what now? Verse 3 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 3. Mm -hmm. To do justice and judgment. To do justice and judgment for his people. Because he saw the injustices that was done for the, for, on, on the people when they were pushing Africans as a medium of instruction. He said, no, we're not going to accept that. You understand? So he saw the injustice. Guess what he did? He decided to do something about it. He stood up for the nation. Okay? Read again verse 3. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 3. Mm -hmm. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. You see that thing? To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Now watch this. Because when he saw the injustices that was done, guess what happened? Hold this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 4, verse 1. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 1. I'm going to show you what the Lord did. Okay, because he saw the injustices of his people. Read that, because the Lord put the spirit upon him to see that. Read it. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 1. Read. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. And that's exactly what he saw. He saw the oppressions that was done under the sun. The oppressions that was done to the people here in South Africa. He saw that he saw what the Buddhists was doing. He saw what the Dutchman was doing. He saw what the Africaners was doing upon our people, oppressing us with their language. 
forcing us to convert to their culture and customs. Okay, read again, verse one. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter four, verse one. Read. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. Mm -hmm. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed. You see that thing? Remember he says he opened the ears of men. You understand? So he was able to hear to see the tears of those that were oppressed. Go ahead. And they had no comforter. They had nobody to comfort them. Okay, come on. And on the side of the oppressors, there was power. On the side of the Buddhists, on the side of the Dutch, there was what? And on the side of the oppressors, there was power. On the side of the Buddhists that oppressed us here in South Africa, with Africans, with killings, with, with lynching, you understand, with gunshots, guess what? There was power, but they had no what? But they had no comforter. But they had no comforter, you understand? So what did the Lord do? Give me Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 27. Here's what the Lord do. The Lord did this thing, okay? Because whenever there's, when you examine our history, whenever we find ourselves in the midst of oppression, in the midst of calamity, tribulations and trials, when the nations have their foot on our neck, the Lord always sends Savior, okay? PSC machine was a Savior. Understand that. Nehemiah 9, verse 27. Read it. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 27. Come on. Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies. Because we were in the hands of our enemies. We still are. You understand? So 1976, we was in the hands of our enemies. Okay? The Buddhists. We still are in the hands of our enemies right now. In South Africa. Go ahead. Who vexed them? They vexed us, you understand, with Kafir Khan. That's why they said, away with Kafir Khan, away. Because they vexed our people with that language. Right? And in the time of their trouble. In the time of their what? And in the time of their trouble. In the time of our trouble, what did the Lord do? When they cried unto me, mm -hmm. thou heardest them from heaven. Uh-huh, go ahead. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors. That's what the Most High God did. The Lord sent saviors. Whenever we find ourselves in trouble, the Lord always sends saviors. Joshua was a savior. Moses was a savior. Nehemiah was a savior. You understand? Ezekiel was a savior. Jeremiah was a savior. Christ, the Messiah, a savior. Okay? Guess who? PSC Machinini. He was one of the saviors. Okay? Read again verse 27. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies, who vexed them. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, Thou heardest them from heaven, and according to their manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors. You see that thing? According to the mercies of the Lord, the Lord sends saviors, meaning leaders. The savior goes into the leaders. The Lord rose up leaders to do what? Go ahead. Who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. Who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. Because back then, as a nation, we still knew we had enemies. Today, because of integration. You understand? Because of the rainbow nation of Mandela. Now we don't know who our enemies are. We have forgotten. You understand? But our forefathers with the machine, they did not forget who their enemies are. And guess what? We must not forget who our enemies are. Understand that? The Most High God does not want us to forget our enemies because as a nation, we have enemies. And the enemies is all the nations outside of the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? Watch this. Now, Let's get a history on our forefathers. Let's understand our forefather, his mindset. Okay? Watch this. Now, I want you to read this. I want you to read. Do you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, read that thing for me. Come on. Reading from essayhistory.org. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Debuho Tieti Machini. Debuho Tieti Machini. That's the brother right there. That's our forefathers. You understand? Let's get a quick history right there. Read that. First name, Debo. Last name, Machinin. Mm -hmm. Date of birth, 27 January, 1957. Go ahead. Location of birth, Central Western Chabavu, Soweto. Go ahead. Date of death, 1990. Read. Location of death, Guinea. Mm -hmm. You Gender, are the name. Male. Male. Okay, now read that. Let's get some, some history of our forefathers. Read that for me. Come on. 
T.A.T. Mashinini was born on 27 January 1957 in central western Jabavu, Soweto. Mm -hmm. Mashinini was the second son of Romutibi, a lay preacher in the Methodist Church, and Nomkita Mashinini, and was one of 13 children, 11 boys and twin girls. Go ahead. He was active in his local Methodist parish and chairperson of the Methodist Wesley Youth Guild at the age of 16. Mm, go ahead. His education started at the Amajeli Crash in 1963. Go ahead. He went on to Seoding Lower Primary, after which he proceeded to Itzepeng Higher Primary. Go ahead. In 1971, he became a student at Morris Isaacson High. Morris Isaacson High, that's where we were last week. That's where we were on the Sabbath day. Morris Isaacson. Okay, go ahead. He was a passionate reader. He was a what? He was a passionate reader. You see that thing? That's one of the, you see, leaders are readers. Let me say that again. Leaders are readers. He says he was a passionate reader. Go ahead. This was spotted by his history and English teacher. Abraham Onkobote Tiro. So Abraham Onkobote Tiro was his history and English teacher. Watch this. Go ahead. Who taught at Maurice Isaacson after was expelled from the University of the North, Tefluop. Of the, of the North, Tefluop, mm -hmm. for his political activities. So Abraham Onkobote Tiro, he was a teacher, okay, he was a history and English teacher that taught CSC machine. He also he was involved in political activity. Why, what, what is that political activity? Go ahead. Iro had great influence in shaping Mashinini's political thinking and subsequent adherence to the ideology and philosophy of black consciousness. You see that thing? So Abraham Mkupuze Iro, he actually taught CSC Mashinini the way to think the way that he did. I want you to see something here. I'm going to show you something. Okay, go ahead. He mentored him and supplied him with reading material. Read that again, read that again. He did what? He mentored him and supplied him with reading material. You see that thing? Because he was a passionate reader. So guess what? He was mentored and he was supplied with reading material. Now watch this. Give me the book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Galatians 4 verse 1. You know what? Hmm. Before you get there. Give me the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 12. Hebrews 5, verse 12. I'm going to show you something here this day. Okay, come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 12. Go ahead. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, mm -hmm. you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. You see that thing? The first principles of the oracles of God is that you must be taught again. You understand? And guess what? T.S.C. Machine, he understood this. He understood this thing. Okay? Read that again, verse 12. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 12. Read. For, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, mm -hmm. which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Come on. And have become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. So he needed the milk. He needed the foundation. You understand? To be able to do what he was, yet what eventually was able to do, you understand, later on. Give me Galatians 4 verse 1 now. Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Read. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, mm -hmm. though he be Lord of all. Read. But it's so under the Lord of all, it says a child who is, who is an heir, he says he's not different from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Because eventually he ended up leading what the, the Soweto student uprising. Okay. But guess what he needed for him to do that? Next verse. Come on. But it's under tutors and covenants until the time appointed of the Father. Next verse. Read verse 2. Okay. Read that. Read Galatians 4 verse 1. The book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. 
is that the heir, as long as he's a child, he's not different from a servant, though he be lord of all. Go ahead. But he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. You see that thing? But he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Because guess what he had machine in here? He had tutors. He had a two year mentor, mentoring him, grooming him, okay? Until the time appointed of the father to be able to do what he did, okay? Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Okay. I want you to read that again. Um, it says, he was a passionate reader. He says, this was ported, read that. This was ported by his history and English teacher. Read that. This was ported by his history and English teacher, Abraham Nkhupute Diro, mm -hmm. who taught at Morris Isaacson after was expelled from the University of the North, Turf Law, for his political activities. Go ahead. Diro had great influence in shaping Mashinini's political thinking and subsequent adherence to the ideology and philosophy of black consciousness. Go ahead. He mentored him and supplied him with reading material. He mentored CSD and supplied him with reading material. That's what we're reading here. Read Galatians 4 verse 2 again. The book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 2. Read. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. You see that thing? The reason why I made this young man exceptional was because he wasn't lazy. You understand? He wasn't a bum. Okay, he wasn't shiftless. He was a passionate reader. Because why? The spirit of the Lord was on him to be able to see the condition of his people. You understand? And when he saw that, he said, listen, I'm going to do something about this thing. Watch this. Now, I'm going to show you something, right? Give me Mm, give me the book of Revelation 1 verse 3. Revelation 1 verse 3. Read that. The book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. Come on. Blessed is he that readeth. Mm, you see that? Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that readeth. So CSC Machinini says he was a passionate reader. You understand? The Lord was working with his brother. Read again. Verse 3. Read. The book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Blessed is he that readeth. Go ahead. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. And they do what? And they that hear the words of this prophecy. I want you to keep that in mind. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. The prophecies, now when we read Deuteronomy 28, guess what? It's history. You understand? The majority of it, it, it has happened already. But that's part of the prophecy. You understand? Which is what? The testimonies of Christ. Read. And keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. Now watch this. Watch this. Go back. Go back to uh, the part when he says he mentored him. Read that again. He mentored him and supplied him with reading material. Read. Through Tiro, Mashinini started reading about the history of Africa's struggles. Stop, stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Before we go any further, let's read about this brother. Abraham... Um, Ramotiri Unkhuputetiro. Read that. Abraham Ramotiri Unkhuputetiro. Mm -hmm. Let's read that. Let's read that synopsis. Synopsis. Political activist, teacher, member of the South African Students Organization and Black Consciousness Movement. Mm -hmm. Sasso's permanent organizer, honorary president of the Southern African Students Movement, exiled person, Killed by a parcel bomb. You see that? So whenever you saw black leader, whenever the white man, the Buddhists on this side of the earth, the Buddhists, who fan nicker, who fan zay, who be three teeth, you understand? Who, um, Paul Kruger and all of that, because those are all the same people, okay? Whenever they see a black leader rise up, guess what they do? They put them to death. But the Lord is raising 144,000 leaders. Understand that. They don't want to kill all of us. They are not going to kill all of us. Okay? Go ahead. First name, Abraham. Last name, Diro. Date of birth, first name, nine That's November. a beautiful name. Whoa, 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 whoa. You see that part right there? His first name. Look at his first name. Abraham. Okay? Abraham. Abraham. A father of many nations. The 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. First name Abraham, last name Tiro. Mm -hmm. Date of birth, 9 November 
Go ahead. Date of death, 1 February, 1974. Okay, let's read a brief history about our brother. Okay, read that. Abraham Onkopoti Ramotiri Tiro was born 9 November, 1947 in Dinokana, a small village near Zirast, Northwest Province, South Africa. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. His parents, now late, were Nkokwe Peter and Moleseng Anna Tiro. Read. Tiro had two brothers and one sister. His mother was a domestic worker at Emerentia in Johannesburg, Transvaal, now Gauteng. Go ahead. Little is known about his father. Go ahead. His uncle, Ned Onkhopozi Tiro, who he was named after, and Bafedile Masoba, his aunt, had a deep influence on his upbringing and sharpened his leadership skills. You see that thing? Listen, look at that thing. You see, our forefathers and foremothers, guess what? They were completely in, in they, 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 guess what? They understood the importance of what? Of guiding. They understood the, the, the importance of teaching the children. They understood the importance of that. Unlike today when we raise our children with Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and Facebook. Go ahead. Dero spent time with his uncle, where he assisted him with the running of the bakery business. Mm, he understood your business minded too. Okay, read that. He started his schooling in 1951 at the Ikalafeng Primary School. Mm. The school was closed down as a result of strikes against passes for women. So that's the dumb part. Okay, read on. This disrupted his studies. Because guess what? This disruption right here is part of the reason why he was activated to do what? To go and fight for the for the nation of Israel, to fight for his people. Go ahead. During the five months of disruption, he worked on a manganese mine for 75 cents per week as a dishwasher and general hand to raise funds to further his studies. Read. He attended Naledi High School in Soweto. You see that? Where the uprising started. Remember when we were talking to, the, to our brothers on the ground? This, and the old brothers that was there during the time of PSC machining, they said basically the Soweto uprising started at Naledi High School and it moved on to um, Morris Isaacson. Okay, go ahead. He attended Naledi High School in Soweto, Johannesburg, for two months but was arrested for a pass offense. Mm -hmm. He then went to Barolong High School in Mafikeng, Northwest Province, where he matriculated. Okay, go ahead. After completed standard 10, now grade 12, he enrolled at Tuflo, now University of the North, really? for a degree in humanities. Mm. Here, he was elected president of the Student Representative Council, SRC, in his final year. Really? At the university's graduation ceremony in 1972, Diro delivered a speech that sharply criticized the Bantu Education Act of 1953. You see what he did? He was criticizing the Bantu Education Act. Watch this. Go ahead. This later became known as the Toflo Testimony. Mm, you see what they codenamed it, the Toflo Testimony. Read on. Authorities at the university were angered by Tiro's outspokenness, and following the speech, Tiro was expelled from the university. You see that thing? You see what happens when you stand up for truth? Because Bantu education, you know what is also called slave education. Just like Christianity. Christianity is a slave education, just like Bantu education was a slave education to keep the to keep black people on this side of the earth as slaves. And that's the same thing that uh, Jan, Jan Hendrik Perwood said the same thing. That Bantu education is designed to keep the black men in South Africa as a slave. That's what he said. That's what Sir Wood said. Okay. Read. Despite demonstration by students under the new SRC, Tiro was not readmitted. One of his earlier encounters with the administration as SRC president was when they wanted expunged from the student diary two articles that they regarded as objectionable. Objectionable. So they didn't like what he said. They didn't like that thing, okay? Now, I just wanted to show you the type of character that this brother was. 
Hence why he was able to do what? To pour the same spirit in Tietzi Mashimi. Now let's go back, okay? Let's go back right there. Let's go back. Now read that. It says, through Tiro, uh, through Tiro, Mashinini did, did what? Read that. Through Tiro, Mashinini started reading about the history of Africa's struggles. Stop right there. You see what he did? So he was influenced and mentored. Remember, it says he was a passionate leader. Okay? So he started to read about the history of Africa's struggles. Not just South Africa, but the struggles that black people go through on the continent of Africa. You understand why? Because remember, at this time, the Berlin Conference has already taken place where Otto von Bismarck and the 13 European nations, they came together to divide Africa into a piece of cake for themselves so that they can rob and spoil us of our land, our gold, our resources, you understand, and to get slave labor. So the machine, he understood this thing, okay? Ray. American slavery. Yeah, he walked on. He read about Africa's struggle, which, which is what? G20, 20, verse 33, all that. We coming back. The, the, the struggles here on the, on the continent. Okay, G20, 20, verse 33. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 33. Read. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away. You see that thing? So the history of African struggle, he read about what? Colonization. He understood that, that the fruit of our land and all our labors, meaning we would work for the fruit of our land. Shall another nation come and eat the fruit of our land? Following the Berlin Conference, you understand, in 1884, the Dutch, the French, the British, the Europeans, the Americans, the Spaniards, the Portuguese, they came and divided the continent up. Okay, go ahead. Because the Berlin Conference, they followed the, the conquest of David Livingstone in the 1700s. Read. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. You see that thing? We're going to be mad for the sight of our eyes because we're going to see our enemy taking our land. We wouldn't have, have no power to do nothing about it. So he understood that. Okay, read verse 43. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 43. Read. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. The stranger that will get up above us very high is the same stranger that will come and take the fruit of our land. You understand? It's not talking about black people. It's talking about the other nations outside of us. The Dutch, the French, the British, the Portuguese, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Arabs. That's what he's talking about here. Go ahead. And thou shalt come down very low. We're going to be at the bottom. We are going to be impoverished. We're going to be cast in the cities and in the fields. Read. He shall lend to thee. They're going to, they're going to lend us money. They're going to borrow us money. Go ahead. And thou shalt not lend to him. We're not going to lend to them. Read. He shall be the head. And thou shalt be the tail. You see that thing? They're going to, they're going to run the economy. They're going to own the economy. You understand? They're going to control access to jobs and how much you get paid and where we live and how much we live for. We live, how much we live by on a daily basis. They were gonna control all that. You understand? They will divide us into lower class, middle class and upper class. And the majority of us, we are on the lower class. We are, we are, we are be, be basically below the poverty line. That's what the other nations would do. That will have power to take our land and our resources and leave, our, leave us in an impoverished state. He understood this thing. He understood this, okay? Go back. Through Tiro, read that. Through Tiro, Mashinini started reading about the history of Africa's struggles. He, read, he understood colonization and what happened, okay? So he was reading about the struggles of his people, read. American slavery. He read about the American slavery, which is what? The transatlantic slave trade. He read about that thing. Get that into 2028 now, verse 47. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord of thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, okay, read wait, 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 read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart 
for the abundance of all things. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, mm -hmm. and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. Mm -hmm. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So guess what? When he says he read about the history of American slavery, he understood where the slaves were coming from. The slaves were taken from the continent of Africa. He understood these are, are my ancestors. These are my brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, aunties and uncles. He understood that. That means he read about the transatlantic slave trade. You see that picture right there? You can see the picture, right? Yes, sir. That picture right there. So he saw, he, he read about this, what we see here. Yokes of iron on our forefathers' neck, like that right there. He saw this, okay? He read about this. He read about the transatlantic slave trade. Now read verse, four, verse 68, okay, come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Lord will bring us into slavery again. Egypt is another name to mean slavery. Give me that in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 8 now. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 14. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 14. Read. Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which mm -hmm. brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. You see that thing? He brought us out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. So go back to Deuteronomy 28 now, verse 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Lord will bring us into the house of bondage again. But this time, we would go on cargo slave ships. That's what you've seen right there. These are the cargo slave ships. And these are the, our forefathers on the ship. You see how they are packed right there. You see across, vertical and horizontal and vertical. We are alive. Look at that right there. The white man putting our forefathers on the ship. Our foremothers sitting there scared. Okay, and this is how we were packed on ships, like sardines, like cargo, literally like cargo. Okay, read. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, mm -hmm. thou shalt see it no more again. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. Slave men, slave women, go ahead. And no man will deliver us out of this condition. He understood that. He read in the history book what happened to the, the, the so-called Negroes in the Americas. Because the Negroes, they are Bantu. Okay? Negroes are Bantu. Understand that. He understood all that. It's only our people today who don't understand who don't believe what we teach on the street. But that's their history. Okay? Right there. He, this is what he understood. He saw the history of the the so-called American Negro, okay, and he read the struggles of the Bantus on the continent of Africa. What he didn't know is that these were the Israelites from the tribe of Judah, and he was one of them, okay? He was one of them. He just didn't understand, he just didn't know that part, but he understood the prophecy, because why? He was a reader. He was a passionate reader, okay? Now, Let's go back to the article, okay? We need to read that thing again. Now read it. Through Tiro, Machinini started reading about the history of Africa's struggles, uh -huh. American slavery, the human rights movements in the USA, and about the evil of apartheid. Because the two are synonymous, remember? When the human rights movement we started in the U.S. in the 60s, where, you understand, know, because of Jim Crow. Here in South Africa, these movements that we started, you understand, the Black Consciousness Movement, who T.S.C. Machinini rising, who Steve Biko rising, you understand, who Chris Honey rising up, and all that, was because of apartheid, the apartheid regime on this side of the earth. And apartheid was longer than Jim Crow even. You understand? Let's get there. The truth about apartheid. Hold on a second. Okay. Right there. He read about Jim Crow on that side of the earth, and he read about the truth about apartheid right here. From 1652, because on in these latter days. You understand? He read about this. 
our foremothers in Rustenbeck on the cotton fields and all that. You understand? In Rustenbeck in the tobacco plantation, in Mpumalang in the maize plantation. Kimbani, when our people were digging up gold, diamonds and all that, you understand? Working in the farms, of which we don't, we don't own none of them. We don't own cotton and all that. He read about all that. Guess what? He also read about what? The Sharpeville massacre. Because this happened in the 1960s. You understand? The Soweto uprising was 1976. Okay, 16 years later. Okay. He didn't read about Marikana because it's recent. Okay. You understand? And this had not happened yet. This is what we're looking at here. This has not taken place yet. All right. Now, now I want you to read that again and finish it. Through Tiro, Masinini started reading about the history of Africa's struggles, mm -hmm. American slavery, the human rights movements in the USA, and about the evil of apartheid. Go ahead. Masinini was the chairperson of the debating team at his school and his excellent academic performance became the basis for his influence among his peers. You see that thing? He was able to influence others around him. Now watch this, watch this. Now what we need to understand is that, remember, he is reading about the struggle of the black man. He is starting to go, he saw, okay, why this is going on here now during his time period, but his mentor, Abraham Nkupu says like, no, 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 no. I need to give you the big picture. I want you to go back to the history of where this thing comes from. What's going on? What happened in the past? So you can see what's happening now. So he was what? He was able to show him the history of his forefathers. Very, very pertinent stuff. Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 4, verse 27. Deuteronomy 4, verse 27. Let's read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 27. Go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, mm -hmm. and he shall be left few in number among the heathen, with the Lord shall leave thee. You see that thing? So, because Moses prophesied that we will be scattered among all nations on earth. We read by slave ships, through colonization, forced migration. You understand? So, that's what the nations will do to us. Okay, jump down. Read verse 30 now. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 30. Mm -hmm. When thou art in tribulation, when thou, art in, when thou art in tribulation, and all remember, these he was reading about the history of African struggle, American slavery, the human rights movement in the USA, and about the evil of apartheid. He was reading about all that. Okay? When what thou art in tribulation, because during CRT machine in his time, we were still in tribulation like we are now. You understand? So now the Lord is saying, when you are in tribulation, go ahead. And all these things are come upon thee. Apartheid. All these things that come upon thee. Apartheid is one of those things that came upon us. Read. Even in the latter days. Even in the latter days, meaning in the last day. 1976 is also part of the last day. 2022 is part of the last day. You understand? During CSC machine in his time, that was the time period of part of the last day. Read. If thou turn to the Lord thy God, Mm -hmm. and shall be obedient unto his voice because at this point they didn't have the holy scriptures of the Lord with them yet but the Lord had put the spirit upon them to see the condition of their people to stand up to defend and deliver the people from oppression that's what the Lord that's the spirit the Lord put upon them I'm going to prove that in the next verse next verse watch this come on verse 31 come on the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 31 read really? For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Stop right there. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Remember what you read in Exodus. Hold this. Give me that in Exodus 33 verse 19. We read it earlier. Okay. It says what? Um, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Read that. Exodus. The book of Exodus chapter 33 verse 19. Go ahead. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. Mm -hmm. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. Pray. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. Come on. And I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. You see that thing? He says, I'm going to show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Yes, the machine the Lord showed mercy upon him for him to do what he did. The Lord showed mercy upon Uncle Potetiro to do what he did. 
The Lord showed mercy upon our forefathers who still be He showed mercy upon them. You understand? He showed mercy upon Christians. He showed mercy upon them. He poured his spirit upon them to wake the people up. Understand that thing. And they were radical. That's why the apartheid government didn't like them. That's why our people don't like people like we see machine. They don't talk about him. They don't show him on TV. You understand? On Villa Gazi Street, they don't talk about that brother. They don't talk about the machine at all. Because during June 16, they go to Zapita, the Zapitazan monument, they go to Mandela House. But they don't say nothing about the machine. You understand? Those are the people the apartheid government hated with a passion. And guess what? Our people today, they don't talk about those brothers. We're going to talk about them. Read again. The book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 19. Read. And he said, I will, make my, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, mm -hmm. and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, Read. and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, mm -hmm. and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. He says, I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Go back to Deuteronomy 4, verse 31 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 31. Read. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Mm -hmm. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee. Wait. Nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. Mm -hmm. You see that thing? He did not forget the covenant he swore unto our forefathers. Go ahead. Next verse. Watch this. Come on. For ask now of the days that are past. Hold it. Read again. What? For ask now of the days that are past. He says, now is this because ask now of the days that are past. Remember what the machine was doing? What Mkukuzo did, he, he, he mentored that young man. He mentored him to do what? To read about the struggle of his people. And he did that. He was a passionate leader. He understood this thing. He understood geopolitics. He understood how the world operated and who the enemy was. He understood that. He wasn't confused about that thing. That's why he had the type of spirit that he had. Read again. Verse 32. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 32. Mm -hmm. For us now the days that are past. He says, as now the days that are past. Hold that. Get Job 8 and 8. He says, as now of the days that are past. Job chapter 8, verse 8. Read that. The book of Job chapter 8, verse 8. Come on. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Mm -hmm. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. You see that thing? It says we must inquire of the former age, of the days that are past. We must inquire. We must know our history. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Give me the 32 verse 7. Okay, come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 verse 7. Read. Remember the days of old. Mm -hmm. Consider the years of many generations. Read. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. You see that thing? Remember the days of old. He says, ask now of the days that are past, of the former age. He's saying the same thing. The prophets are all saying the same thing. Okay, give me First Maccabees 2 verse 50. First Maccabees chapter 2 verse 50. The Lord is saying, inquire of the former age, the past. You must know your history so you can understand how the enemy moves. The reason why our enemies are able to always have an upper hand is because they know our history. They study us. Okay? Read that. First Maccabees 2 verse 50. First book of Maccabees chapter 2 verse 50. Go ahead. Now therefore, my sons, be zealous for the law mm -hmm. and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. That's what our forefather CSE did. Our CSE machine and he gave his life and the brothers that he was fighting with, you understand, in the struggle with they gave their lives for the people. Go ahead. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. You see that thing? That's why we're going over the history of our forefather, C.S.C. Machine. We're calling to remembrance the acts that he did in his time. Read. So shall you receive great honor and an everlasting name. It's our job to make sure that our forefathers that came before us, that did great and mighty work, they receive an everlasting name. Our job is to do what? Is to remember those famous men. Is to exalt those famous men. Is to use them to inspire us for us to be able to do the same thing that they did in the spirit of Christ. Okay? Go back to where he was at now. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 32 again. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 32. Go ahead. 
For as now of the days that are past. As now of the past, the former age, what our fathers did in their time. Go ahead. Which were before thee, mm -hmm. since the day that God created man upon the earth. You see what he said? Go all the way back to the beginning. Okay, read. And ask from the one side of heaven unto the other. Mm -hmm. Whether there have been any such thing as this great thing is. Or have been heard like it. You see that in the great thing, that which is what? The greatest evil that is done upon a people upon the earth is known by everybody upon this earth. And when D.S.C. Machinin was reading about this, he understood that. Give me Daniel 9 verse 11. He understood that thing. He understood it. That's why he was moving in the type of spirit that he was moving in. Because what? He was studying. He understood what happened in the past. He understood that. He did not just understand what was going on locally, but he understood what was going on across the continent. Because he understood that we are all suffering the same oppression. Ghana, Guinea, Morocco. You understand? Um, Mozambique. Okay? Um, the, the Congo. He understood all that. Nigeria. That we all have the same enemy. Which is who? The Dutch, the French, the British, the Portuguese. You understand? The Arabs, the Chinese, and the Japanese. Those are our enemies, God said. He understood all that. Okay, I'm going to show you later on. Daniel 9 verse 11. Read it. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Verse 11. Go ahead. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. Mm -hmm. Even by departing. Come on. That they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. Read. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Because the reason why these atrocities was happening to us, because we had broken God's commandments. We went against his order, the covenant that he made with us. Read. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us, mm -hmm. and against our judges that judged us. Read. By bringing upon us a great evil. What kind of evil? By bringing upon us a great evil. A great evil. A great evil. A great evil. That's the same thing that Moses said in Deuteronomy 4, verse 32. That look at from one end of the of the of heaven and onto the other, meaning on the whole earth. That this great thing that has taken place, it has not taken place on anybody else but the people of the book, which is us today. Go ahead. For under the whole heaven has not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. Because guess what? Look at the, the we our PSC machine in revolted against what? He revolted with the students. They revolted against the use of copper guns, right? But the level of response that they were met with was beyond, was, listen, it was unmeasured. The students are protesting peacefully, unarmed against a medium of, the language, a medium of instruction that we don't understand. But the, the response of the Buddhists was completely disproportionate, letting you know they knew something that many of us did not know back then. They knew something about us. Because our people, the nations, they read our book. They know who we are. They know the time for us. When we wake up, we're causing rau rau in the community. And that's what they were afraid of. That's why the reason why they responded, they responded the way that they did. Because it was deeper than that. Okay? Watch this. Now, let's go back to the article. Okay? Let's go back to the article. Now, let's see. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay, let's read about this, Mike Schmidt. Okay, read that. On the 13th of June, read that. On the 13th June, 1976, mm -hmm. about 500 Soweto students met at the Orlando Donaldson Community Hall to discuss ways and means of confronting and challenging the Department of Bantu Education. You see that thing of the means of challenging the Department of Bantu Education, meaning the Department of Slave Education. That's what Bantu education was, slave education, you understand? Because that's the same thing that uh, um, the CSC machine in his, his teacher, he was writing about, which he got him expelled at the university. Read that, read that again, okay? At the university's graduation ceremony in 1972, Diro developed, delivered a speech that sharply criticized the Bantu Education Act of 1953. You see that thing? He, were, he criticized the Bantu Education Act of 1953. This is 1972. Now, in 
On the 13th of June, 1976, guess what? After mentoring CAT Machinini, look what CAT Machinini is taking it to the next level. You see that thing? Read that again, that paragraph. On 13th June, 1976, about 500 Soweto students met at the Orlando Donaldson Community Hall to discuss ways and means of confronting and challenging the Department of Bantu Education. Right. Let me share my screen real quick. So let's see. Let's see. Read that. Bantu education and the racist compart compartmentalizing of education. Okay. Bantu education and the racist compartmentalizing of education. Read that. In 1949, the government appointed the ASELIN Commission with the task of considering African education provision. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The commission recommended resorting to radical measures for the effective reform of the Bantu school system. You see that thing? They, needed, they wanted to change the Bantu school system because the way we were taught, our, our forefathers, the, the teachers back then, they still taught us values and morals. They taught us about our history. So they needed to change all that. Okay, go ahead, watch this. Read. In 1953, prior to the apartheid government's Bantu Education Act, 90% mm -hmm. of Black South African schools were state-aided mission schools. Read. The act demanded that all schools, that all such schools register with the state and removed control of African education from the churches and provincial authorities. You see what they were doing? They were removing any trace of our history because they did not know what was being taught at those schools. Read. This control was centralized in the Bantu Education Department, mm -hmm. a body dedicated to keeping it separate and inferior. You see what they were doing? Their job was to make sure that we get the poor education as much as possible. That's why today our people go to universities and all that, but they cannot do nothing with those degrees. Guess what? The Bantu education that they was, was put together under the Ethelene Commission is still inactive today. Don't get it twisted. Read on. Almost all the mission schools closed down. Mm -hmm. The Roman Catholic Church was largely alone in its attempt to keep its schools going without state aid. Because this, these ones, the Romans, they were teaching us white Jesus. Read on. In 1953, the 1953 Act also separated the financing of education for Africans from general state spending and linked it to direct tax paid by Africans themselves. You see that thing? Now they impose the tax on us. Go ahead. With the result that far less was spent that far less was spent on black children than on white children. That's the same thing. It's still going on today. Okay, let's see. Mm, there's something I want. Let's see. Hopefully, it will open up here. Uh, I really did not want to go into this. I really didn't want to go into this now. To, not today. But the whole point of the Bantu education was a what? was a slave education. That's the point. The Bantu education is a slave education. Okay, go back. Uh, read that. On the 13th of June, read that. On the 13th of June, 1976, mm -hmm. about 500 Soweto students met at the Orlando Donaldson Community Hall to discuss ways and means of confronting and challenging the Department of Bantu Education. The department, they, were, they, were one, they wanted to challenge the Department of Bantu Education. If somebody can find an, a part where it talks about uh, where they were saying the Bantu Education objective was to keep the black man as a slave, you understand, as a servant, to maintain servant and, and master and servant. Somebody find me there. Okay, go ahead. The students decided to stage a peaceful protest, protest march on 16 June against the introduction of Africans as a medium of instruction. Because this was the center, this was the central point of why CAT Machinini gathered the students together to go and protest against the use of Africans. This is what started the what? The Soweto uprising, okay? Remember, this is on the 13th of June, okay? Read that part again, the students did what? The students decided to stage a peaceful protest march on mm. 16 June 
against the introduction of Africans as a medium of instruction. You did that thing. So now, watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Habakkuk. Okay, give me Habakkuk 3. I'm going to show you something. It says, they what they say a peaceful protest. They were unarmed. They say the peaceful protest. Watch this. Habakkuk 3, read verse 14. Watch this. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 14. You know what? Hold on. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Read that. Read that. Read that. Let's just read it. Come on. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. The head of the villages is talking about the white man. He's the head of all the nations on this earth that are working together to destroy us. Go ahead. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Mm -hmm. Meaning Christ. Read. Their rejoicing was to devour the poor secretly. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Because understand, the nations, their job is to devour secrets, meaning what? They don't do it in your face. You understand? They implement 50-50 in the household. They implement uh, black women empowerment. They implement um, women wearing pants. The feminist movement. You understand? They're pushing homosexuality in our community. They're giving us poor education, poor housing, poor medical, whatever. And everything is poor, poor, poor. You understand? They make sure that they keep us at the bottom. They destroy our history. And the history that they teach us is to glorify their forefathers for conquering us. That's what we know about Jan van Riebe. That's what we know about Napoleon. You understand? We know about them because they pushed their forefathers on us that conquered us and destroyed us. That's what they did. That's what their desire is to destroy us secretly. Okay? Give me the book of Isaiah 32, verse 7. The book of Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 7. Read. The instruments also of the, of the churl are evil. Like giving us what? Giving us... Um, Forcing Africans as a medium of, medium of instruction upon us. Hence, why, hence the protest. Read. He devises wicked devices, destroy the poor with lying words. He destroy the poor with lying words because they always lie. Go ahead. Even when the needy speaketh right. Even when our people were peacefully protesting against the use of Africans as a medium of instruction, even when the needy speaketh right. Who was the needy? He had the machinini and those 520,000 plus students that marched on that day. Okay? Now, read that again. The students decided to do what? The students decided to stage a peaceful protest march on 16 June against the introduction of Africans as a medium of instruction. You see that thing? So they were enforcing Africans as a medium of instruction. Now, watch this. Um, give me the book of Deuteronomy 20, verse 49. Okay, because as part of the curses of Deuteronomy 20, as part of God's judgment, the nations that will come upon us, they will force their languages upon us. Get that? Deuteronomy 28, verse 49. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 49. Wait. Right. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, mm -hmm. from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. You see that? A nation. Okay. Hold it says, a nation against us from far. Remember, um, your young Van Riebeck and his boys, you understand, they're coming from Dutch, the Netherlands and all that, the Buddhists. Guess what? That's the nation that came against us from far, 1652, okay? It says, as swift as the eagle flies, because an eagle is a bird of prey. They devour the prey. So guess what? That's the spirit that this white man has. And also, his symbol is the symbol of the eagle. Okay, go ahead. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies, mm -hmm. a nation of tongue thou shalt not understand. You see that thing? A nation of tongue we will not understand. Because what were they teaching? Go back to the article. Read that again. The student did what? The students decided to stage a peaceful protest march on 16 June, against the introduction of Africans as a medium of instruction. You see that thing? So that Africans as a medium of instruction, guess what? That's what the Lord is saying here. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, because our people did not understand Africans. But the Buddhists were forcing Africans on us. 
even at the jobs today, 2022, they still speak Afrikaans among themselves, even when they are not next to us. But when we speak ours, they feel uncomfortable. You cannot make this up. You understand? Go ahead. An action committee was set up to prepare for the campaign. Mm -hmm. Okay, all that. Go back, go back. You don't need read verse 50 again. Read verse 50 now. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 50. Mm -hmm. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. So now it says that a nation of fierce countenance, meaning what? They don't give a damn about nobody, but the agenda that they have, which is to conquer and colonize and make sure that everybody uh, assimilates into their culture. That's what the Greeks did. That's what the Romans did. That's why they're saying during the time we were slaves in Rome, they say, when you get to Rome, do, Rome, do what the Romans do. You understand? Our forefathers that have assimilated to Roman culture. You understand? So the Buddhists, which is the same people, they were doing the same thing here, forcing Africans upon us. Okay? Now, just back to the article. And action, based on what, what, what this, what, you know what? Hmm. You see, this thing of forcing a language upon us is not during the time when, during the time of apartheid. It happened even in the past. I'm going to show you that. Give me the book of Daniel 1 verse 4. Daniel. Because during the time of Daniel, we were slaves under the Babylonians. The Nilotic Kushites, the Nilotic Ethiopians, okay? Read that. Daniel 1, verse 4. The book of Daniel, you know what? Chapter 4. Start of 1. Start of 1. The book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. So now, this is around 626 BC. This is uh, Nebuchadnezzar came against us and besieged the city. Jump down to verse 4 now. Watch this. The book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Children um, who, in whom was no blemish, mm -hmm. but well favored and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. Okay. Mm -hmm and whom they, they might teach the learning of the tongue of the Chaldeans. You see that part right there? Whom they might teach the learning and tongue of the Chaldeans. Guess what? They taught us the tongue, their tongue, the Chaldean tongue that they spoke during those days. You understand? We were slaves under Nebuchadnezzar. They forced their language upon us also during this time. Give me the book of 2 Maccabees 6, verse 6. This is now, we're going to the time of the Greeks. Second Maccabees 6, verse 6. Watch this. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts, mm -hmm. or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So under the Greeks, we were not allowed to celebrate our ancient high, the, our high holidays that the Lord gave unto us. You understand? Not only that, we were not allowed to profess ourselves that we were the Jews of the Bible. So the Greeks, they changed our nationality. Then our, the change of our nationality started with the Greeks. Not only did they change our nationality, you understand? Read verse 8 now. Okay, read. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 8. Read. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen mm -hmm. by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews. So now the decree is a what? Is a mandate, is an executive order. That's what the, the Buddhists did during, with the Bantu ADH Education Act. As part of that was to make Africans as a medium of instruction. So they put out a decree. So the Brazilian, I need you to send me the picture that we took when we were at the, at um, in Soweto. The picture where we're standing, where they were showing the picture, the multiple pictures of, um, of CSC machining. Okay, and they were showing um, the, the decree that was given by the Buddhists during that time. Okay, send it to me on WhatsApp. Yes, sir. Okay, read verse 8 again. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Moreover, they went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews. That they should really? observe, 
that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. You see that thing? So now the decree that was put out by Ptolemy, we were, who was a Greek, okay? Guess what? That's the same thing that the Buddhists did when they came on this side. They did the same thing that our forefathers did during the time of the Greeks when we were slaves unto them. They put out a decree, you understand, that we, they against us, that the, we should observe the same fashions, meaning we should observe their culture, their customs, and they force their own languages upon us and be partakers of their sacrifice. Meaning what? Birthday, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, Christmas, so on and so forth. Read on, verse 9. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. You see what they were doing? They were killing us. And I'm going to show you because that's what the Buddhists did. They opened fire on what? A peaceful protest of the students. That's the same thing the Greeks did. That's the same thing that the what? The Buddhists did, which is the same people. They call themselves Buddhists, Dutch, whatever, English, you know. They are all the children of Esau, Edom, Idumis. Read again verse 9. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 9. Read. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. You see that thing? When we did not conform, we said, away with Capricans, away. Away with Africans, away. What did they say? They should, what, what should happen to us? And whoso, and whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. You see that thing? If we do not conform to the manners of the Gentiles, they put us to death. You understand? And guess what? During Africans, during the, the apartheid, when they were putting Africans on us, that's exactly what they did. They killed unarmed students. You understand? Now, let me open let me open that up so I can blow it up so we can see. Let me blow this big. Okay, do you see the picture? Yes, sir. Okay, let's see now. If we can see. Um let me see if I can blow it up some more. Hopefully we can see it. That's our brother right there. Stacy Machining. Okay. Away with Baride. What did it say? Away with Bantu education. Away with Bantu education. Okay. So that's what he said. Let's read that. Read that. This is what Stacy Machining said. Read it. If you're not doing what the government expects you to do, then you're a communist, of course. Then you are a communist, of course. Okay. Let's see. Mm. Yes, read that. How come, read how long, read that. How long must we must we be bullied, bullied? kicked, choked? Choke. Um I don't know what I don't know what that is, but it says, how long must we be bullied? Kick, choked, and kill. I can't see that last part, but it says and kill. Okay, let's see. Mm. Yeah, it's just that it's not visible. Okay, but when we're standing next to it, um, we could see that. But read that. Away with what? Away with Bantu education. Away with Bantu education. Remember, as part of Bantu education, guess what they were gonna do? They were enforcing. Africans upon us. You understand? Let's see. Let's get some more. Mm. So what you see here is just that you can't see it because you know it's too blurry. But this picture right here, what you see here, this thing right here was the decree. Was the decree, the mandate, the executive order that they passed that Africans was going to be the medium of instruction. When you're standing next to it, it actually explained that somewhere right here. It explains that, okay? So, um, read that again. Second Maccabees 6, read 8 and 9 together again. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 8. Read. Right. Moreover, they went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen mm -hmm. by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews. Read. Right. They should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. Read. Right. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. So this is the misery, this picture that you just saw, that I showed, that was the present misery that was going on during that time. When our, our, our forefathers, 
with the machine in the students were fighting, you understand, against this thing. Okay, let me show the picture again so you can see. Right there, right there. This is where we were standing. I was with Soldier Bisliel when we came here, okay, to see the history of what was going on during that time. Okay, this right here. All right. So that's what you are seeing here. Okay, what the machine was talking about. Now, um, let's go back to the article. Okay, let's go back to the article. Let's read some more. Let's continue to read. All right. Now read that. Action committee was then what? Read that. An action committee was set up to prepare for the campaign. Mm -hmm. Mashinini was elected chairperson of the action committee which was later renamed the Soweto Students' Representative Council, mm -hmm. with Mashinini as its first president, until he was succeeded by Khotso Siatrolo yeah, from cool. Naledi High School. So Khotso Siatrolo succeeded him. He was from Naledi High School. Remember, when we're talking to the people on the ground, they said what? They said the uprising started at Naledi High School, and it moved over to um, Isaac Mori. Uh, Maurice Isaacson, right? That's what they said when we're talking to the people on the ground. Okay, go ahead. Mashinini and, Mof and Murphy Murobe were the two representatives were the two representatives from Maurice Isaacson High School serving in the Soweto Student Representative Council. So now they understood, they formed and they formed an organization, a body for them to be able to organize, for them to be able to be on one mind and one accord. So they had enough strength to do that. Go ahead. During assembly on the morning of 16 June at Morris Isaacson High School, Mashinini climbed onto the podium and led students into song mm. and out of the school grounds towards the assembly point for the planned student demonstration. So they were planned to demonstrate their grievances, you understand, to rally everybody up and guess what? They all understood who the enemy was. They were not confused about this thing, unlike us today. Go ahead. They were joined by students from other schools in Soweto. Mm -hmm. It is estimated that 20,000 uniformed students joined the mass demonstration. You see that thing? They joined 20,000 plus. Go ahead. As they marched down in a, thr in a throng, they came across a police barricade on their way to the assembly point. So now, hold on. Remember, there, it was a peaceful protest, right? It says they were what? They came across a police barricade on their way to the assembly point. A police barricade comes with what? They come with guns. They come armed. Remember, these are students. They are not armed. They are singing. You understand? Power to the people. That's what they were doing. They had no guns on them. We don't. Mashinini climbed a makeshift podium to deliver a spirited address, mm. telling students to march peacefully, to remain orderly, and not to provoke the police. You see what he told them? So he said, listen, this is a peaceful protest. Don't provoke the police. Remain in order. They were well ordered. Go ahead. The horrific events of that day which saw the South African police shoot live bullets at peacefully protesting students, turned him into an instant hero and an activist of national importance. Read that again, read that again. Come on. The horrific events of that day, which saw the South African police shoot live bullets at peacefully protesting students, turned him into an instant hero and an activist of national importance. You see what the police did? is that the horrific events of that day, we saw the South African police shoot live bullets at peacefully protesting students. Watch this. I'm gonna show you something because in order for them to be able to rally up 510 into 20,000 plus, they were all in the same mind, why? Because they understood who the enemy was. Give me Nehemiah 5 verse 9. Nehemiah chapter 5 verse 9. They understood the enemy. Because because of integration and the rainbow nation of Nelson Mandela, our people today are bugged out. That's why when we went to teach at Gilagasa Street, guess what the black woman said? The black woman said, 
when we're teaching that Jesus is a black man, you know what she said? She said, we are teaching apartheid. You cannot make this up. Even when white people were saying, yes, indeed he's black, the black woman was not saying, no, no, no. Don't teach that. That's apartheid. You cannot make this up. Read what you got. Nehemiah 5 verse 9. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 5 verse 9. Go ahead. Also, I said, it is not good that you do. Mm -hmm. Or do not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies. You see that thing? It says, or do not to walk in the fear of God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies. With the machine and those 20 plus students and the rest of the families that joined in, they understood who the enemy was. You understand? They, their enemy was not their own brother. Their, the enemy was the Buddhist and they understood that. There was no confusion. Today we confuse. Watch this. Give me the book of Zechariah, okay? Zechariah chapter 11, verse 5. Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 5. Because, you know what? Hmm. Give me the book of Zechariah 2, verse 1. I'm going to show you something. Because with the machine, they understood the power of unity. They understood that. They understood that thing because people were literally drop, dropping dead. Hmm. Read what you got. Zephaniah 2 verse 1. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Read. Gather yourselves together. Hmm. Yeah. Gather together, O nation not desired. With the Adima Shinini, they understood that, that we are a nation that is not desired. And we as a people, we have enemies. So it was necessary that we are on the same page. They are not necessary that everybody understood why they were there. Get that in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10. 1 Book of Corinthians, chapter 1 verse 10. Go ahead. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that ye all speak the same thing. You see that thing? With the machine and the rest of the students, they all spoke the same thing. Away with Africans, away. They understood that. They understood the mission. Read. And that there be no divisions among you. That there, must, there were no divisions among them. Because they understood who the enemy was. And T.S.D. Machine, he was a reader. So he understood the history of the oppression of his people. Read. But that he be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. And they were all perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. You understand? They understood that. They understood it. Now, read that part again when it says the horrific events. Read that again. The horrific events of that day which saw the South African police shoot live bullets at peacefully protesting students turned mm. him into an instant hero and an activist of national importance. So now, you see this thing right here? It says they saw police shoot live bullets at peacefully protesting unarmed students. You understand? That's what happened. Go ahead. He stood steadfast against state harassment and imminent oh arrest. Goodness. He did what? Hmm. He stood steadfast against state harassment and he imminent stood, arrest. He said he stood steadfast. Let's get the definition of steadfast. Let's get the definition of steadfast. Hmm. Heavy stuff. Now read that. The definition of steadfast. Definition of steadfast. Adjective. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Resolutely or dutifully firm and unwavering. You see that thing? He was resolutely and dutifully firm and unwavering. He did not waver. He understood the mission. Okay, go ahead. Similar. Loyal. He was loyal. Go ahead. Faithful. He was loyal, faithful to the cause, to the mission. Read. Committed. He was committed to the mission. Read. Devoted. Hmm. Dedicated. Go ahead. Dependable. He was dependable. Come on. Reliable. He was a reliable brother. Go ahead. Steady. Steady. Read. True. He was not a fake sir. Go ahead. Constant. He was constant. Constant. Read. Trusty. Trusty. Go ahead. Determined. Determined. Read. 
Relentless. Relentless. Go ahead. Single-minded. Single-minded. Come on. Unchanging. Unchanging. Unwavering. Unwavering. Go ahead. Unhesitating. Unhesitating. Come on. Unfaltering. Unfaltering. This is the character of this machine. Go ahead. Unswerving. Unswerving. Read. Unyielding. Unyielding. Come on. Unflinching. Hmm. Inflexible. Inflexible. Come on. Uncompromising. Uncompromising. This is the character of our forefather, this machine. Give me that in Sarah chapter 5. Okay. It is Yastikas chapter 5. Read verse Sarah 5 and verse 10. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 is 10. Wait. Be steadfast in thy understanding. You see, the CSC machine was steadfast in the understanding, the mission, and the duty that he had to perform for the benefit of his nation. Read. And let thy word be the same. And let thy word be the same. Be uncompromising, un unswerving, unfaltering, unhesitating, unwavering, single minded, unchanging, inflexible. Because why? He was disciplined on the mission. Okay. Now, let's go back. Read that part again. He stood steadfast against state harassment and imminent arrest, mm. issuing press statements and calling for students to boycott classes, and wrote critically of the police's actions on 16 June that saw innocent students massacred. You see that thing? So the Soweto massacre, because it was a massacre. You understand? On June 15, he saw innocent students massacred. Remember, it says it was 20,500 uh, 20, plus students that was there protesting against Africans or Africans, because that's what they call it. Okay, now, watch this. Give me the book of Zechariah, chapter 11, verse 5. Zechariah. Because we need to deal with the people that shot at innocent students with live bullets when they were protesting peacefully and they were unarmed. Read that. The book of Zechariah, chapter 11, verse 5. You know what? Hmm. Hold on. Watch this. Give me, I'm going to deal with that uh, when it says the peaceful, innocent student. Give me Luke 10, verse 3. Luke 10, verse 3. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 3. Go ahead. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. You see that thing? That's exactly what happened. There were lambs among wolves because they were innocent. They were protesting peacefully. They were ordered not to provoke the police. And they did not provoke the police. The police, the way they responded, it was disproportionate to what the student was doing. You understand? Give me Matthew 10, verse 16. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. We need to understand the characteristics of our enemies, okay? What happened in June 16? The massacre. Go ahead. The book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 15. One thing, one thing. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. You see that thing? Uh, that's what the machine ordered the people. I send you, I will send you as sheep in the midst of wolves. You order them, listen, it's a peaceful protest. That's exactly what they did. That's the same thing that happened on uh, during uh, the 21st of March, 1960. You understand? When Robert Sobu went them, you understand? We speak big and all. They were protesting against, listen, we don't want to use uh, the dump policy to be able to travel to different neighborhoods and all that. Guess what? They opened fire on them too. The same thing. 16 years later, the same thing took place. Go ahead. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Peaceful protest. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And that's exactly the students were. The students were harmless as that. Give me Zechariah chapter 11, verse 3. The book of Zechariah chapter 11, verse 3. Go ahead. There is a voice of the howling of the shepherds. You see that thing? The voice of the howling of the shepherds. We the shepherds, the saviors, the leaders. Go ahead. For their glory is spoiled. Because our glory, the glory of the people is spoiled 
we are spoiled by the philosophies and culture and customs of these other nations. Read. A voice of the roaring of young lions. A voice of the roaring of young lions. But Tiasi Machini and those brothers, they were those were young lions. Go ahead. For the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Because the pride of our people was spoiled, meaning what? Our glory was destroyed. Watch this. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord, my God, mm -hmm. feed the flock of the slaughter. That's what the that's what the machine did. He fed the flock. He rallied the students up to say, listen, we need to fight for our freedom. That's what he did. The spirit of Christ was working with us, brother. Understand that thing. But guess what? When we came as sheep, guess what? How they responded. Read the five now. Watch this. Whose possessors slay them? They do what? Whose possessors slay them? They are possessors, meaning our oppressors, the Buddhists during that time, they slain us, they killed our people in cold blood. Hold this. Give me Leviticus 26, 17. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 17. Whose possessors slay them? Okay. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 17. Right? And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. Mm -hmm. They that hate you shall reign over you. They that, hate shall... us, they that hate us will rule over us. So read that again, verse 15. Let me catch it. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. Right. They that hate you shall reign over you. You see that thing? So now what we're reading here, the most High God is saying, it says what? And ye shall be slain before your enemies. Because guess what? It says whose possessors slay them. Who slain us? Our enemies is our possessors. Our enemies is our oppressors. They cannot be our savior. You see that? Our enemies is those that possess us, those that own us, those that are ruling over us and oppressing us. Guess what? They kill and destroy us, okay? That's what the Lord is telling us, that will, what will happen to us. And they will rule over us. Go ahead. And you shall flee when none pursueth you. Did you see that thing? We fled. Because what was pursuing us? It was not them. It was their bullets. Their bullets were pursuing us.